Okay, so I'm going to talk uh, tonight about uh, solar ketchup. That's a good topic, right? So um, I'll start by describing the, the problem, okay? Uh, so if you look at the picture of Earth at night, the reason it's dark because it's at night, okay? The little dots that you see over there, these are lights created by men. And the point here is that we all use energy and we all need more and more energy. This slide shows the solar map, the solar radiation map of the globe. The darker the color is, the higher the radiation. And the point of this slide is to show we all share the same resource, we all share the sun. We all have to eat as well. So this is a picture of greenhouses in Israel. And that's a greenhouse structures in Jordan and Palestine, and it looks more or less the same because guess what? We all need to eat, so we need to grow our peppers and our tomatoes and our cucumbers, so we all kind of use the same methodology. It's called agriculture. Okay? Now, you haven't seen really borders yet, right? Uh, so here it is. I know we live in a crazy neighborhood, and I know that borders are a big issue to die or kill for, but my point tonight is the fact that we all use energy, the fact that we all share the same sun, and the fact that we all have to think about what we're going to put on our plate tomorrow, means that energy and environment, in fact, are beyond borders. Okay? And we'll come back to this point later. So, if you want to create clean energy, one way to do it is to harvest the sun, to put these big solar fields or solar installations, and you translate the solar energy into what we call electricity. It's great, but if you think about what kind of areas you need, you need large-scale areas, you need them flat, you need them adjacent to the grid, they exist, but we kind of use them. We use them to grow crops. These are agricultural areas. So you can clearly see the clash between food and clean energy, because they're going to compete on the same piece of land. So, in the spirit of imagine, imagine that we had a film, you know, plastic-based film. This film can be exposed to sunlight, and this film could also create electricity, which actually makes it photovoltaic, okay, translating the solar energy into light. But what's unique about this film is it's partially transparent. You can actually, some of the spectrum, some of the light goes through the film and can support plants and crops, so what's the main idea here? The main idea that you can have tomatoes, that's why the ketchup, and electricity being produced on the same footprint, on the same land. Would it be nice if we had something like this, so the farmer can sell you know, cucumbers and electricity at the same time? That's a happy farmer, <laughs> okay? So wouldn't it be am amazing to have something like that, right? We can all agree. Uh, a few years ago, I met a company in the United States of America, in Massachusetts, the company name is Conarca. These guys produce solar plastic-based film. Now, what took me about the technology was the fact that they, these are the people that came from Polaroid, so they know how to produce large-scale plastic sheets. For the young uh, generation, let me just explain, guys, once upon a time, we <laughs> used... We used uh, <laughs> sorry, they don't know what I'm talking about. We used the negatives for the pictures we took, uh, this is a dying industry, <laughs> so now we can make the same technology, but kind of adopt it to create solar films. Okay, end, quote. En end of explanation. Anyway, uh, when I met these guys, uh, they showed me their film. And actually, here it is. This is the film. And it's amazing, and it's produced just the way I described, and mass-produced, and it's lovely. And they showed me how it's working, and I noticed something interesting. It's kind of uh, transparent, <laughs> right? So I asked them, uh, are you sure that all the light is being captured? They say, actually not. But it's a problem in our product, we know that, and we're working hard to capture all of the light. <laughs> and I uh, said, so what, what are the wavelengths? What are the colors that are escaping? And they, actually, it's the, it's the blue and the red. So I said, wait a minute, weren't you listening in your biology class? <laughs> you know why plants are green? because they don't care about green, they reflect the green, the green color back to us. Actually, what plants really need 
is mostly red and blue color. So the problem in your product, that's the merit of your product. It's amazing. You can grow things under the film. Say, really? <laughs> Sounds crazy. I don't know what they're talking about. Okay, so here you go. Wonderful idea, wonderful symbiosis between agriculture and energy. So how do you release it into practice? How do you actually check if it's actually working? So that's a problem. And I was sitting on my balcony, I was talking to my kids and family about, you know, this thing, you know, potentially a wonderful combination, but how to make, how to check that it's really working. And uh, we used to live right across from the Van Leer Institute, and my kids say, hey dad, what's this institute on the other side of the street? I said, it, actually it's a Van Leer Institute, but I don't think it's a good fit because these guys are kind of academic. I don't think they really work on applied research, but I, um, I applied. And, uh, and what happened, uh, the Van Leer Institute decided to go ahead and check whether Isaac is crazy or not. Whether <laughs> you can actually grow microalgae and seaweed and cucumbers <laughs> and tomatoes under the solar film. Um, so we actually did, we did that. We, we actually looked at all of these crops with and without the film and we could not find any significant difference uh, between crops that were growing under regular greenhouse cover versus crops that were grown under um, the solar film. Uh, everything looked great until we met the tomatoes. Okay, so I want to tell you the tomato story. So what happening if you're taking a, a tomato and you grow it under um, greenhouse cover, you get a typical growth rate of tomatoes. And what happens if you shade it, you grow tomatoes under the shade? What's going to happen? You're going to get less tomatoes. But what's going to happen if you grow the tomatoes under the solar film? Guess what? More. It grows even better. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so here, I introduce you to the first solar ketchup. These are, this is ketchup that's made out of tomatoes grown under a solar film. So the ketchup was involved in producing electricity as well. Isn't it amazing, right? <laughs> now I'm going to tell you the really amazing story. The really amazing story, I mean, I love the technology and I think it has a great merit, but for me personally, the really amazing story is the group of people involved in the study. They were men and women, they were Palestinians, Israelis, Jordanians, and I can call them my friends, okay? And I would give you just one incident to demonstrate uh, what it meant to me. So we, we had a meeting here in Van Leer, and we, it's the first time that we heard about the success of growing the solar ketchup. And um, by the way, the experiment, this experiment was done in Ramallah. And uh, then we decided to celebrate. So we went to have lunch in a nearby restaurant. We we're sitting there. It's right around the corner here. It's called Cafe Moment. This place was hit twice by a suicide bomber. And we're sitting there with my Jordanian, Palestinian friends, celebrating cutting-edge technology. For me, that's the essence of developing technology together. I felt a great privilege to be part of it, great privilege to meet these amazing people. So then I decided to change the name of this talk. Basically, it's not solar ketchup. It is actually regional solar ketchup because it's a regional effort. Thank you. <laughs>